Boker Tov and welcome. Today I wanted to go over more than a dozen reasons why I have decided to just do school year round. You know, the more I think about it, the better I think it's going to be for our family, especially since we're Torah observant. I'll explain. My name is Ann Elliott and I'm the creator and founder of homeschoolingtorah.com. Reason number one, kids don't forget as much. You know, we just got done with Passover. In our family, we took two weeks off and a couple weeks before that, off and on with a few weeks of school and then a few weeks off because of traveling to conferences and various things getting ready for the feast. And my kids quickly, especially the younger ones, quickly forget a lot of things. My youngest son, he is just in kindergarten and he forgot the sound of all his vowels. So this morning, it's a Monday, we had to sit there and work on all those vowels again. My daughter, a little bit older, has been memorizing all of her multiplication facts. Well, they were gone and we only took off a couple weeks. I was thinking about that, you know, if we took off the whole summer, it's like we'd have to start all over again. And curriculum authors, yes, we do know that, and almost all curriculum companies make the first few weeks of their curriculum um, be filled with a lot of review. And that review is good, but sometimes it gets very tedious, and I really don't want my kids to forget things by taking three or four months off every summer. So that's just a no-brainer. Another reason, um, if we use a curriculum company, and even Homeschooling Torah does this, that uh, has review for the first several weeks of each, each new year, especially in math and grammar and all of those, then life is more fun. Our kids have uh, easier periods of school. And, and whenever school is easier and things just come faster, our kids enjoy it better. They feel more confident. They say, you know what, I really know this. And granted, maybe it's that they're hitting a review section, but I want my kids to enjoy learning and to feel like they've actually accomplished something and they have easy times. It's not always hard, hard, hard. I don't like life like that. And I love that Jehovah's Calendar plans for times of breaks and rest interspersed with times of hard work so things feel easy sometimes and hard sometimes. I think that's cool. Here's, I just hinted at it, but here's another reason. We need time for the feast. And not only time for the feast, but before and after the feast. If anything is at your house is like mine, the feast does not just start with the first day, the first High Holy Sabbath. Um, it takes time to clean my house for Passover. It takes time to get ready for company. I've got food to prepare. Um, I might actually wanna go do some fun things with my friends. Um, I'm going to have company coming in from out of town or maybe I'm traveling to somewhere else. It takes time to pack my suitcases, it takes time to shop for things, plan uh, my packing list. Whoever said one week off is all we need is obviously never done this before. You need time before and after those feasts and then they are much more enjoyable rather than cramming everything in right up to the date. We also need time to have visitors at our home and to show hospitality, not just at the feast time, but all throughout the year. For ourselves, we have a lot of family and they do not follow the Torah, um, they do not follow the biblical feast. They're still on the other holidays such as Christmas and Easter. So we could have company on those holidays as well, just because that's when they're off of work and we want to see them and to spend time with them. So it's really nice to allow time in our school schedule to have visitors. We also want to have time to take trips. Maybe for our family, we wanted to visit a couple uh, Messianic conferences this spring, so we did. And I, I'm really glad that we got to meet new friends and my kids got to meet new friends. And if we didn't have time in our school year for those short little trips, those two or three day trips, then we would be all the poorer for it. But I also want time for field trips, field trips in our local area. You know, maybe there, I hear um, on Facebook in a local group that I'm in that a local science center is having a free day this Thursday from 10 till 2. Well, there goes my school day because honestly, we won't accomplish very much school if we did that. But I want to have some flexibility built into my schedule so that I can do that. I also want time for co-ops. Now, I don't do a lot of co-ops. I'm busy as a mom. I have seven kids. We homeschool and I work a lot of hours online writing homeschooling Torah. And then we're starting a church. I don't have a lot of time, but I've been praying about start joining a local co-op every Friday. I know that's preparation day, but it's early enough in the day I think I can go to that, let my youngest three have some friends and learn some new things from other teachers, and I can still get home and get ready for Sabbath on time. 
but see now that I will have lost my Fridays for school. So I need to have some flexibility and if I can school year round, I have more days, more days that I can get what I want to accomplish and get some extra fun things in for them too. You know, I even thought about, I don't know if I'm going to do this, but I know other people do and I've thought about it. You could school just four days a week and then that would give you say maybe the first day of every week you could have off to do housekeeping or shopping things. You could have the sixth day for preparation day and then days two, three, four, and five could be your school days. Now, if you were to use Homeschooling Torah for that, we already have built in this cool thing where the first three days of each week are built into the curriculum to be a little bit more intensive and needing more time for discussion and help one-on-one -on -one with a parent but days four and five of each week are lighter where the kids can do their work on their own. Now, if I wanted to spend that time with my kids hands-on, I could combine those and have a four-day curriculum. Or how we do it in our house is that my kids on either the first day or the fifth day, they do their easier stuff and then the other days, I have some flexibility and we can accomplish those three days somewhere in there. <laughs> um, another thing, you could take six weeks of school on, and then just at the same principle as the Sabbath, every seventh day is a day of rest. You could have every seventh week be a day, a week of rest. That's more from mom's benefit than anyone else. But during those months between the feasts, that's a really good thought to keep in mind. Um, I, I'm really considering doing that this year. I also want days where I can enjoy the weather. Here in Michigan, I don't know if you can tell from the, the video, but it's a little gloomy and cloudy today. We have a lot of cloudy days. So when we have a day of sunshine, I wanna go outside and so do my kids. Or if we have a snow day, well, they wanna grab their sleds and I want to let them. Because personally, I think that that fresh air and exercise is good for them. Unfortunately, we also have sick days in our house. I get sick often and a couple of my kids tend a little bit towards that way. So I know, I'm just being realistic, I need to schedule times for sick days. The schools, you know, might allow up to 10 days a year for sick days, but I think as homeschooling moms, we feel guilty adding it into our schedule and just planning on it happening. If it doesn't happen, then you have more days you can play, right? Just have a day off. Finally, and this is my 12th reason, um, if I'm using homeschooling Torah, the content on the membership site is dripped. That's what it's called when every few weeks after another payment, for the, those that have a monthly payment, more content is added to their membership site. So little by little, they get more and more and more. Well, that's nice and all, but sometimes what you want to do in your homeschooling this week, you only receive it on a Sunday or a Monday, and, and you need to start teaching right away. I like it when content builds up and so that I can plan ahead, I can say, oh, you know what? Six weeks from now, we're gonna study George Washington and there's a great local museum and I bet you we could plan a field trip for that. So I really like schooling year round because it gives me a longer range view of what is coming and I don't always have to plan so close. So those are a dozen reasons why I, for one, am going to start my new year after Passover from now on. I don't worry about grades. I'll, I'll keep saying what I always say. Kids, you know, people ask, what grade are your kids in? And I think, oh, I don't remember, what grades are they in? And I have to kind of find my politically correct answer based on their ages. But for myself, I want them to have a good education and I also want it to be more low key. So I'm thinking to myself, just as in Exodus 12, Jehovah said to Moses and Aaron, this shall be the first month of a new year for you. I'm thinking this would be a great time to have a new year for school as well. Then I was thinking about my calendar. This is my 2016 calendar. I'll get it up there so you can see it a little better. But we had Purim and we took a few days off there because we wanted to make our costumes. We had a busy time of travel in March. We had the spring feast in April. But notice there's some months of quiet. Maybe a family trip here, maybe. And then in October this year, we're gonna have some more spring feasts and we've got a little bit of Hanukkah. I'll probably still do school at that time, but we might have company for the other holiday. So I'm thinking to myself, I can see some clear times that we can get some really good schoolwork done and some obvious times where we probably won't. 
For me, it's an obvious thing to start a new school year and have a good fresh start. Some review packed in after taking some time off because we're starting at the beginning and then have good amount of school, a nice break here, and then finish up our school year in the winter time when it's yucky weather outside and we'll be able to accomplish a lot. All right, I hope that was a helpful thing for you. I, you know, I, most of our customers, probably eight out of 10 of our customers do a monthly membership where they pay $39 a month. But I was thinking about this as a one more benefit, call it a baker's dozen, so now you've got 13. If you were to have an annual membership and start it right after PESOC, you would pay $3.99 for the whole year and have access to everything that is available in that year. And you wouldn't have to think about any payments and you get a substantial discount paying up front. And you wouldn't have to rush to always feel like, you know what, I paid for every minute of that month, every month, and I need to have school every minute of that month. And that pressure that kind of builds up, to me, it's a lot less pressure to be thinking ahead. I've got a whole year to finish this curriculum and I don't have to think any more about it till next year at Passover time. And I just I feel so much less burdened, less in a rush, less frustrated and stressed out. I hope that helps you. If you have ways and ideas for making your school year less stressful, I'd love to hear them. Send me a comment. And if you haven't thought about an annual membership, I encourage you to head on over to homeschoolingtora.com and get an annual membership today. Save yourself some money and some stress. Shavuot Tov. Have a great week.